Whoa. Hey, Doc. Thank you so much for getting me in today. Absolutely, Mr. Ballistic. So why have you come to uh, my office today? Okay, so sometimes this thing happens to me and I don't remember doing it. And I'm calling it watermelon time. If mm -hmm. somebody asks me what time it is, I just black out. And then they say that I scream it's watermelon time and then shoot watermelons. And where exactly do these watermelons come from? I don't know. And sometimes it doesn't even happen that way. I hear an alarm clock going off and then I just black out. Right, right. And again, everyone says the same thing. I scream out watermelon time and I shoot watermelons. And again, Mr. Ballistics, uh, where do these watermelons come from? I don't know. Of course. So I really need your help on this, Doc. I mean, it's happening right now. Do you hear it? Excuse me? The alarm clock, do you hear it? No, I don't hear anything. It's right over your shoulder and you don't hear it? No, I certainly do not hear anything and there's definitely not anything over my shoulder. It did happen, didn't it? It did, it happened, I'm so sorry. So, uh, should I just like come back tomorrow or something or? No, I, I think I'm gonna refer you to a specialist. What's up everybody? My name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. It's been a while since we broke out the elephant guns. So today we're gonna have some fun with those and a plethora of bowling balls. I'm really excited to see what this looks like on the slow-mo camera. Let's go get set up and get started. So I bought these bowling balls back in December. I got them on sale. They all weigh 16 pounds and they all are untapped. There's no finger holes. And you may not know this, but these bowling balls are really tough, especially the 16 pound balls. So before I blast them with elephant rifles, first I'm gonna take a few shots at this ball with a very common rifle caliber and show you just how hard these things are to crack. Okay, we're all set up and we're gonna start out by shooting this first ball with some 5.56. I have 10 rounds of 73 grain 5.56. Let's see what this does to that 16 pound bowling ball. Here we go. and it doesn't look like it did a whole lot of anything to that bowling ball. Let's go check it out. Okay, Mr. Bowling Ball uh, pretty much ate though. So it looks like we did penetrate the bowling ball but did not do very much damage to it. We've got a, a crack right there from that round. But uh, nothing made it all the way through and this bowling ball is, I mean, still in pretty good shape. So now I think it's time we step it up to the elephant guns. But before we do, I wanna say thank you to SDI for sponsoring today's video. If you're looking for a career in the firearms industry, you need to check out Sonoran Desert Institute. It's all online classes, so it's super easy for you. Be sure and check them out. There's a link in the description down below. So I got us a brand new bowling ball set up and now we're gonna move on to the elephant guns. The plan is to start out with the smaller of the elephant guns, which this thing is not small, but it is the smallest one I brought out here today. And we're gonna work our way all the way up to the 700 Nitro Express. The first one we are using is a CZ 550 chambered in 416 Rigby. Just for reference, that's the 556 we were using. And then you have the 416 Rigby with a 500 grain solid. All right, here we go. <laughs> If the 
four sixteen Rigby just did that. I, uh, I mean, should we even go bigger or? Uh, <laughs> All righty then. Um, that's uh, quite a bit of shrapnel. Um, uh, you definitely don't want to be standing close to one of these if you were to shoot it with an elephant gun. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> man, I shot one of these with a 12 gauge like years ago, and I thought that that did a lot of damage. It's got nothing on that 416 Rigby. I mean, we're going to step it up and use the other elephant guns, but I just honestly was not expecting that big of a reaction on the very first shot. Uh, we have bowling ball everywhere. Yeah, so I'm gonna set up another ball and we're gonna step it up. So the next elephant gun we are using is a 460 Weatherby Magnum. This thing is no joke and it shoots this behemoth of a round that is a 500 grain solid. So I messed up with the 416 Rigby. That was actually a 400 grain solid and here is the 460 Weatherby Magnum with the 500 grain solid. Well then, um, that was a little bit more than the 416 Rigby. So it seems the 460 Weatherby Magnum is also very effective at destroying bowling balls. Uh, there's shrapnel everywhere. I did manage to find this piece right here, and that is where we hit. Looks like I hit right underneath the path text on the ball, and uh, it just completely detonated like the first one. So now it's time to step it up to my favorite elephant guns, the double rifles. First up is my 470 Nitro Express. On the left is the 460 Weatherby Magnum, and then on the right is the 470 Nitro Express. It is also a 500 grain solid. just nicked it. All right, so yep, I was aiming high and it looks like I hit high. So I will have to look at the slow-mo footage, but I think I hit about where I was wanting to hit when it comes to windage. Just got my elevation wrong. So after reviewing the slow-mo footage, I was correct. I had my windage right, but my elevation was off. I definitely 100% did not flinch. If you like the new shirts, go check them out. There's a link in the description down below. I thought it would be appropriate because today we're shooting the biggest guns out there. And if you're gonna flinch, this would be the time. Favorite part about this gun. <laughs> Load one more. Okay, let's check this thing out. We can actually see a path through this one. And it looks like that's where we hit. And then it just dug right through that bowling ball. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> so up next is one of my favorite double rifles, the 500 Nitro Express. And this thing is absolutely beautiful. If you take a look here on the side, you have a Triceratops here on the bottom is a woolly mammoth. On this side, we have a liger, and on this top lever is a chupacabra. Okay, so here's the rounds. On the left, you have the 500 Nitro Express, and on the right, you have the 470 Nitro Express. You'll notice the 470 is a little longer, but the 500 Nitro is thicker. That's a 570 grain solid. With the 470, you have a 500 grain solid. You get about 70 more grains of weight and it's bigger in diameter.
I aim to the right. Why do I keep doing that? Left barrel, so I just assumed I aimed to the right a little bit. But I've scooted up closer, so I should just be aiming dead center. Yep. That's what I did. All right, that's it. Okay. Now we know. At the distance I'm at, I don't need to compensate for left or right barrels. I'm just going to aim dead center. Much better. Okie dokie. I'm going to try not to screw that up for these last two balls. But, um... Well, not really seeing, I guess maybe about right there. <laughs> There's another big piece over here. Put that together like that. So it's hard for me to say because we'd already compromised the bowling ball with our first shot, but I think it's pretty obvious that the 500 Nitro is also very effective at busting up bowling balls. This next elephant gun used to be the big dog on campus. This is a double barrel 600 Nitro Express, and this used to be the biggest thing you could get when it came to dangerous game before it was taken over by the 700 Nitro Express. The 600 Nitro is still no slouch. This is what it fires. This is a 900 grain solid. And just for reference, this is the 500 Nitro Express with a 570 grain solid, and this is the 600 Nitro Express 60 caliber 900 grain solid. <laughs> okay, hopefully I don't screw this one up. bowling ball. This just goes to show you that every gun is different. I aim dead center. With the other guns, we would have hit dead center. But it turns out that 600 Nitro hits a little bit high from that distance. But here's what I find really impressive about this. We hit a little high on this bowling ball and still split it in half. That is absolutely ridiculous. We are gonna move on to our last elephant gun, the 700 Nitro Express, but uh, I'm gonna take a practice shot first. That way we don't screw up this last shot. So here it is, the moment you've all been waiting for, the double barrel 700 Nitro Express. This thing is absolutely ridiculous. It is a 70 caliber double barrel elephant gun. Here is the 600 Nitro Express. That is a 60 caliber 900 grain solid. And here it is next to the 700 Nitro Express 70 caliber 1000 grain full metal jacket. This is pretty much as big as it gets when it comes to an elephant gun and I failed to mention each shot is a hundred dollars a shot. So this is going to be one expensive practice shot. <laughs> All right here we go. Oh. Safety's on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that looks like that is hitting low and to the left. I'm going to go left barrel this time. Okay, so I'm thinking that my sight may be a little off on this gun. The left barrel and the right barrel both hit pretty much in the same spot like they're supposed to, but uh, pretty low and to the left. So the last ball we're going to be shooting is this one right here. It's a clear bowling ball with a skull in it. This is also a 16 pound ball, but it seems like this is made out of a different material 
than these bowling balls here and they all seem to be a little different. I'm wondering if this will actually shatter or if we're gonna get more of a like bullet trail into the ball. So I'm gonna to try to take the guesswork out of this. I've set my target up that I took my practice shots with. I know that if I'm aiming here, we're gonna hit right there. So we've got this lined up with where the bowling ball is gonna be. So in theory, if I aim right here, we should hit the bowling ball dead center. We'll see how that works out. Okay, we are gonna go left barrel. All right, hopefully this works out. <laughs> ah, here we go. care if we nicked it we managed to hit it with some extreme Kentucky windage okay I reviewed the slow-mo footage and we pretty much hit about where we thought we were gonna hit it appears that this ball is made out of something a lot different than the other bowling balls we hit kind of high on the ball and it broke up in a really weird way all the other balls just broken to huge chunks. Like when we nicked the ball with the 600 nitro, it just broke into two big chunks. But with this one, it just shattered. It still looked really awesome and we got a cool result, but I really wanna to get to that skull. The problem is, is I'm not gonna shoot it with the 700 nitro again because I have spent $300 in 700 nitro ammo today. So let's hit it with something else and see if we can get that skull out of there. Okay, now I'm gonna hit it with the first gun that we used, the 416 Rigby. I'm hoping that it doesn't completely destroy the skull. Well, I think I destroyed the skull. Oh man, what a mess. So, looks like we made it to the skull. I was really curious to what that was made out of. Unfortunately, it looks like we completely destroyed it. Here's a little piece. <laughs> so what have we learned today? Well, we learned that 700 and 600 nitro provide more of a thump and energy dump to bowling balls and not so much penetration when the other elephant guns in the smaller diameter, moving a little bit faster, penetrate deeper and create more of an explosion on the bowling balls. Unfortunately, no one really hunts bowling balls, so this is pretty much useless information. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Well, that's gonna be it for today's video. Before you head out, I wanna let you know I ran over a zombie torso with a smart car. Looked really awesome in the slow-mo. You need to go check out that video on Kentucky Customs. There's a link in the description down below. As for today's video, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you did, be sure and give it a like. And if you're not subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also be sure and check me out on Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links to all those can be found in the description down below, along with a link to KentuckyBallistics.com, just in case you wanna pick up a shirt. And as always, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics. I'll see you next time.